This is what happened when Adam tried to teach himself to golf. When he tried to teach himself kung fu. And when he tried to teach himself to cook. Careful, babe. So, when Adam wanted to learn a tap dance, he decided to mirror an expert. Well, when it comes to learning to invest in the stock market, Adam uses the new Mirror Learn and Trade platform on Versa Marketplace. He just needs to register, choose from a selection of analysts to mirror, learn how they manage and strategize their portfolio, and mirror with 100,000 virtual readers. Sign up on VersaMarketplace.com. And just like Adam, you can start your investment journey today. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our webinar, The Worst is Over or More to Come, brought to you by uh, Gananga Investment Bank in collaboration with Bursa Malaysia and managed by uh, Wellford. Yeah, today we are very excited to have invited a very renowned investment advisor as a speaker to come and share with us about this topic. And this is a very, you know, pertinent topic today because why? Our market is very volatile today. We have uh, not early uh, this past week, we have seen that the market were in the red and today the market, you know, uh, go down before KLCI got the last minute search, okay, to end up in the positive zone today. So it's now the questions, is the worst over or is there more to come? So we are going to dissect this topic and uh, our speaker will share with you his perspective in this webinar brought to you by Gananga. Now, uh, bef before we begin, just want to talk to you about disclaimer. Whatever the speaker share in this webinar is only for case study purpose and in no way that we give any buy signal or sell signal to any stock. If you decide to buy or sell any company, you do it at your own risk. Is that okay? So whatever things we share is only for educational purpose here. Now, uh, Gnanga has arrange a series of webinar for you until the end of this year. So in Q3, we have one more webinar for you, which is happening on 24th of September. This in, in that session, we are going to talk about F&B stock. So stay tuned uh, and reserve your 24th of September, uh, Thursday evening, 8.30 to 9.45 for us, where our speaker Ian Tai will share with you about uh, SM, how to dissect F&B stocks. So this is happening on 24th of uh, September. And Q4, we have more uh, webinars brought to you by Gnanga, uh, so stay tuned. Now, uh, allow me to introduce our speaker today. He has also uh, come on our webinar earlier this year, I think it's April. So, uh, Mr. Ui Kohua is the managing partner of MRR Consulting, dealing mainly with business appraisal, investment and financial training. And uh, presently, he is a licensed investment advisor by the Securities Commission Malaysia. So you can ask him, you know, stocks that you want him to uh, share his perspective to you. And uh, today, we are very excited to have you here, uh, Mr. Ui. Are you there? Yes, hi. Hi. Uh, all right, Good awesome. Everyone. So we can't wait to hear your sharing on uh, <laughs> your perspective on the market outlook uh, now. So let me uh, make you a presenter right now without further ado. All right. Over to you. Hi. Hi. Yes. Seeing good evening. Like good. Okay. Ken. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, how are you? I believe you actually have a should able to make a good money over the past few months. So of course, at the moment, uh, market actually rebounded from the low of twenty uh twenty first of March. Dow Jones actually 18,200 to the recent high. The peak is actually about 29,200, so up about 11,000 points. 
So the next question here is basically everyone will ask is actually, you know, so Dow Jones actually rebounded back to the original level before pre-crisis level. So like no crisis at all, no pandemic at all. So, so what should we do right now? Okay. So is it actually the worst? Is actually over or more to come? Okay. And actually future actually drop right now. Okay. Now, today my section will divide it into three area. One is actually on the latest development of the COVID-19. Uh, COVID and then one is actually on the global and the Malaysia economy outlook for 2021 and then stock market outlook for 2021. Okay. Now, start with the first part on the latest development in COVID-19 and vaccines, okay? So if you want to know whether the worst is over or not over, so the first part is actually we need to understand the latest development in COVID-19 because we are in pandemic, okay? Uh, 100 years one time, happened one time. So we must know, and you notice that actually the economy, almost all country, the economy actually highly correlated with uh, how well they manage the COVID-19, okay? Now, uh, this is actually the latest slide from the WHO on the COVID-19 daily reported, daily, uh, newly reported cases. Okay, you can see from here that uh, different type of color. Okay, and you have a case, I mean like Russia, US, no, dark blue. Okay, then you actually a light blue or, or yellow color in certain area. Okay, and in Africa area. Okay, now what I intend to, to zoom in is actually this part, I call it as a bubble C. Today, if you look at Hong Kong, they also say that you want to actually have a certain bubble, uh, uh, direct flight between those countries actually can manage well on the COVID-19. Okay, so to me, it's actually in the end, the world will divide into two bubbles. One bubble will be that, I call it as bubble C. This bubble CC stands for control. Those countries able to control well on this COVID-19. And the rest is actually, to me, is actually the rest, another bubble. Uh, and see, not able to control. So if you look through this bubble, basically is those like China, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, I would say, so I'll put Hong Kong, uh, Australia, New Zealand, okay? Singapore, okay, all these countries actually able to manage well on COVID-19, okay, you notice that don't the number actually uh, during certain periods actually may spike up that able to control it, uh, manage well and below 100 and later on, uh, some actually to the single digit like for example, Vietnam or, or Thailand, okay, now to me, all these countries by next year, they may have a direct flight, so the Economic activities between these countries, to me, later on you will see the more business activities, more investment. Uh, you no know, people may may actually travel between these countries. So because this they these countries the kind the the country and the government able to manage well on the COVID nineteen. How about the rest? Uh, you notice that our government actually closed the border on the on seventeen uh seven of September onwards on 20, 23 countries, basically are all those countries with uh, dark blue colors, okay? So my point here is basically uh, for those actually in the light blue or turn yellow, to me, the worst actually is over, okay? The worst actually is over. For those dark blue, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that actually the worst is actually not over. To me, their economy, they may have seen the worst case. We, have, we may have seen the worst scenario, but the recovery will be slow. I mean, whether it's India, US, or Brazil, the reco uh, recovery rate will be slow, okay? As compared to those in the light blue, okay? Like this part, okay? Now, these slides, the following few slides, you know, I shared with some of you before, uh, in May this year, okay, on a Spanish flu. Actually, this Spanish flu happened in 1918 to 1920. The whole duration also two years. And then actually a lot of scenario. It happened also in March, okay. Uh, started in US, but actually, you know, they spread out 
uh, in Europe, uh, but they call it as a uh, it's quite bad actually in Spain. That's why you know name it as a Spanish flu. So why I want to share with you these slides that basically is because you notice that they all wear masks. Okay, the most important is this slide here. It's actually can you see over here? It's actually November nineteen eighteen. Okay, they are all says uh, no more gathering, no no more than ten. Okay. And they're actually wearing masks. Okay. So, and you know, everyone wearing masks. And you can see they actually started in March and they actually cases coming down during summertime. Okay. So, uh, but the numbers start going up again in, in August and peak during the peak time is actually from September to uh, November. So when I say it's actually whether the worst is over or more to come, we should divide it into two parts. In terms of economy, my view here is actually like Malaysia to me, uh, or China, Australia, I think the, we have seen the worst already, okay? They're on the way to recover, okay? Uh, but for stock market, there's actually you know, another, another possible, another drop, okay? Because of the, the, Cases may go up. Okay, in US alone, actually the number actually surged to almost two hundred thousand. Okay, uh, death cases actually in October alone. Okay, so the peak actually in the second flight, the wave two is actually in from September to November. Okay, so to me, when we say worst is over, not over. To me, Malaysia already in a third wave. Okay. We may have we may see some you know the number going up like today actually a hundred but ultimately the number will come down. To me, I'm not re really that worried because okay, uh, we have uh they're able to control it well. I think in Lahada too, and then you have a uh, cases actually in Keda, this one actually Sabah and Keda. Okay, not actually in the whole Malaysia. Whereas US, Europe, and those dark blue color, they're gonna go through this part here. Okay, especially US, okay, because they are going to enter winter. In US, in every year, they, the people actually die in flu, okay, actually in terms of thousands, okay. So I'll share with you shortly, okay. So US, Europe, they're going to go through this part, okay. Whereas Malaysia, China, we're actually in the third wave already, okay. The num the cases may go up just like recently in Beijing and in Malaysia happening right now. I still uh, try to solve no uh, in Kedah. So ultimately the number will come down. Okay. Now the key part here is basically is wearing masks. Okay. If you wear masks, you actually can stop the spread by seventy over spend. Uh, seventy over percent. Okay. So that's why wearing masks is actually very important. And one thing actually. We also need to take note is actually uh, Donald Trump start to accept that uh, American need to wear masks. That's why you notice that actually the cases is coming down. Okay. Now, but recently, because they no choice, they have to open up for the school. So coming to 40, 40 states actually are facing you know, the increase in actually numbers. Now, US right now, the latest number, you notice that actually it's coming down. Spike up, I mean spike up, then before it go down to zero, then actually, you know, spike up to 70, 80, then now actually, you know, 40, 50, 40 or 50,000 per day, per day, okay? So my point, my view here, is, I think the number will go up, may go up higher than 70,000, okay? Because actually, uh, we need to understand that quite difficult for them to control it, okay? Because actually, US is not a small country. You're talking about 300 or 30 uh, million populations. And then they are talking about human rights. Actually, you know, some actually they, they don't believe in it. So the government actually, you know, and they are not like uh, China. The central can control everything. They actually, you know, individual states actually, may not listen to the federal. So that's why uh, it's quite difficult for US to, to actually to control like uh, China. Now, talk about vaccine development. 
Okay, please take note here. Uh, basically, there are four phases. Okay, quite a number of them actually in the third stage already. Okay, third phase already. Now, after that, four phases. I mean, the phase four. You talk about few few hundred to hundred thousands. Now, this is actually the latest number from WHO that in phase three. Okay, you are, you do have you no know, extra. Uh, there's no uh, biological. Uh, with Beijing is still then uh, uh, Leia and then Sinovac, then you Wuhan, then you are Moderna, okay, uh, Pfizer, all these they are actually coming to hundreds or hundred over, but these are the few that actually in uh, phase three. My view here is actually we will get a uh, vaccine by end of this year, okay. Uh, recent reports showing that the uh, Putin vaccine maybe I mean the, no severe effect, but kidding here is actually is how about tested on all on you tested on normal people or how about other types of uh, people? So I'm not too sure whether really safe uh, or not safe. Continuation shows just say that don't don't have a, a severe or adverse you no know, effect of from the vaccine. So the key question, as I said to you. Can all these vaccines can be trusted? And the percentage of people will get their body you know, injected with all these vaccines. So these are the two key questions. Even though we have vaccine, okay, then why is actually all this is actually important? Important to which which country? Important to country like those in dark blue color, like India, uh, Russia, uh, Brazil, no. The whole South, North, and South Africa, uh, America. Okay, so how about us? Not that important. Okay, not that urgent. But those actually is quite urgent to those those dark blue. Okay, like US all this. Okay, now I also share with during May doing strength flow outbreak. Okay, at that time we do have a strength flow outbreak, and then at that time the president is actually you no know, President Ford, uh, rushed to come out with the vaccine. And they managed to get the vaccine, okay, for this strength outbreak. And key part, I want to share it one more time. And you can see, he actually, you know, injected with these vaccines. Now, the key part is actually, you know, you see, a lot of people line up. And that's it. That, in 1976, actually, is the election year, okay? Now, so people rush to, to get, you know, these vac vaccines. Within 10 months, ah, uh, about 25% of population uh, okay, uh, get injected with this vaccine. Okay. However, because they rush to get you know, to, to get this vaccine, and this vaccine do some hard, some uh, severe side effect, okay, basically GBS, no? Gillian uh, virus syndrome. Okay, about uh, 400 people, 450 people actually you know, develop this, okay, from these vaccines. So my point here is please take pay attention to 10 months, only 25%. Okay. One is actually is even though you have vaccine actually in, in year end, uh, first do, November, okay, but the time 10 months later, that means by next year, end of next year, maybe about 20% only get injected. So if you talk about like this sound I share with you, is actually blue color okay so and you talk about american like today russian if you look through the one report i think they say that the more than 50 percent people in russia don't trust the, this putin uh, vaccine so how about us a lot of country uh, people will trust vaccine but american a lot of american actually don't trust the uh, vaccine so to me to get until 75%, 70% on this uh, herd immunity. So I think it will take a long time. So for US, my view here is actually the recovery, the, we may have seen the worst, but actually the recovery will take a long time. That mean to say, meaning to say that if you look through in 2008 financial crisis, okay, they have a stimulus one, stimulus two, and stimulus three, until when? Until 2014. Okay, so the duration to bring down the unemployment rates from 10% to 
to three percent. Okay, the whole duration of five years. So given this vaccine, I mean this vaccine, given America may not trust this vaccine. So to me, uh, unless able to find uh, to get, I mean the vac the virus itself actually become mild. Normally, what ha will happen? That means after two years, the virus actually become mild, not that contagious anymore, uh, life threatening anymore. Then another thing here is actually is unless the able to find the antiviral uh, medicine to cure it. Otherwise, I think this recovery period will take a long time. Okay, and we're going to have a lot of stimulus. Uh, every three months, stimulus, every three months, stimulus. That's why the gold prices will go higher and higher, higher and higher. Okay. Every three months, and that one uh, stimulus package will come out. So that's why uh, for this uh, 1976, about 400 people, 50 people actually developed this GBS. Okay. Now, and in the end, actually, you know, he becomes just one term, uh, the US president only. Gerald Ford, okay, replaced by Jim, Jim, uh, Jim Carter. Now, next point here is actually is my, my slide already mentioned to you that Donald Trump may lose. I know we are coming to uh, four, five hundred participants here. Okay, some actually uh, believe in Trump, some actually like Trump. Okay, so I can understand your feeling. Okay, I can understand. Okay, because we, sometimes I do have uh, my own was WhatsApp group. Uh. Some actually, you know, really Trump supporters. I can understand. Uh, my view here is actually let me share with you why I say this. Okay. Now, four years ago, if you look at the Trump versus Clinton, uh, based on the real clear politics. So this real clear politics, you can you see the blue and the red? Red is actually Trump. Okay, blue is actually Clinton. So and this real clear politics, basically, they are using all the poor in the markets. Then they find the average. They're not using one. They're using all. Then find the simple average. So you can you see over here the trend here. So sometimes Trump able to close the gap. Okay. But most of the time, actually, you know, Trump, the gaps may widen, but Trump able to close the gap. Okay. Into one, you know, sometimes overtake it. Okay. Then when it comes to July, uh, July, August, sometime, no, this period, even the middle Trump actually overtake uh, Clinton a bit. Then after that, no, in the end, before the election, November, Clinton still higher than Trump by about three percentage. So in the end, you know who actually become, become the, the US president. Okay. But key part here is actually a lot of time, uh, Clinton actually below 50%. Okay. Now, look at Trump versus Biden. Can you see the gap? Can you see the gap? Of course, recently, the Trump actually getting higher. The trend's getting higher. Uh, Biden's coming down. Okay? So that's why people are actually bullish. So, you no, know, July onwards, you no? Know, uh, July onwards, actually, you no, know, Trump actually, you no, know, able to pick up and then Biden's coming down. Okay. Now, I want to share with you this. Can you see the COVID-19 cases, okay? So the numbers, when the numbers actually, you know, uh, coming down, then of course the, the cases actually coming down, then Donald Trump, the approval rating will go up, okay? Then when actually, you know, the cases actually go up, getting higher, then the support level, approval thing will come down. So basically the Trump, his rating is actually have negative correlation with the COVID-19. So same as any other country, any leader. So if you manage well the COVID-19, like Singapore, the government should not, I mean the existing government should not have, should not have any problem you know, to get to, to win the elections. So my view here is actually, what do you think about the next two months, okay. Of course, trend, the recent trend showing that no, the Trump actually don't you know, pick up versus Biden, okay. However, we do have some signs showing that the cases, the COVID nineteen cases may go up again. Why? Now remember, 
I say to you, the peak of Spanish flu, if you look at 100 years ago, is actually in September to November. Why? Because as you entering into winter, okay, it's actually normal to have flu in US. So the key part here is actually this winter is actually how to differentiate between COVID-19 and or normal influenza or normal flu. Okay, that is actually the key question. Now, uh, let me share with you three city. One is actually, you know, uh, New York. Can you see over here? We are actually over here. Middle of September. And the temperature is coming down. LA, the temperature is coming down. Can you see over here? Okay. Can you see Chicago? The temperature already coming down, this line? Ah, that is the reason why. That's why I mentioned to you that, okay, please take note. My, my concern will be, I think this winter will be a tough winter for US, okay? Because the temperature coming down already. The peak of the summer actually over already. That's the reason why stock market start reacting to it already, okay? Because the cases actually last, I think Saturday, the number surged to 50,000. Of all these few days, actually, you know, public holiday, some may not update, okay? So you have to wait on weekday, then you then you get able to see the, the numbers, okay? Now, next part is actually, this is actually the research from the Federal Reserve Bank of uh, Chicago, showing to you that, um, even though it's one to two percent, okay, basically do have a seasonal factors, okay? Basically, the employment number will be low in January, February, then pick up summer, then may pick up again in November, December before entering into the winter. After that, if, can you see over here, the, the job creation will come down because why? Winter. So, my key point here is this year will be a tough year. So, if, you unbe if you're American, you're unable to find a job during these periods, okay? The next few months time, okay, and the cases going up, okay, I'm not too sure with this COVID-19, whether you can able to find a job or not, okay? So, because when it come to uh, December, January, February, relatively, it's a, it's a tough month because winter. So, job creation will be low, okay? Now, the next part will be global and militia uh, economy for 2021. As I said to you, if you look through 2021, this is actually from IMF. Uh, 2021 basically is recovery ready. Okay. As I said to you, in general, we may have seen the worst of the COVID-19 in the economy. But because we do have two bubble, one bubble is actually like say to you, bubble C, those countries can manage well the COVID-19 and those bubble, to me, I call it an NC, not able to control. Okay. So those dark blue color. So notice that Europe, uh, you know, the drop quite severe. And then, but also recovery next year, okay? US actually 4.5%, okay? So you notice that uh, there's actually sharp drop in GDP, but this third quarter GDP right now, when they re start to report in October, November, you will see the number will be better okay, as compared to second quarter. Same as results. Then you say, then you may ask, so, Mr. Wee, so if let's say, you know, the corporate result will be good, then why stock market coming down? Oh, you forget. On the, in March this year, March 21st of March, when the Dow Jones dropped to 18,200, the market already, at that point, the market already factored in all the bad news. However, right now, when the Dow Jones actually recently, on the 3rd of September, the Dow Jones touched on 29,200, that is actually, you know, same level in March level. Dow Jones already factoring all the good news, including the results coming out in October, November will be good results. So these times will be totally reversed as compared to earlier part. If the result is not as good as analyst expectation, the stock price is, instead of going up, is coming down. The other way around really. Okay. 
because the market actually already factored in already. Okay, some analysts actually say V shaped recovery. So if you look through China, China the IMF forecast actually one percent. This number need to revise. Okay, if you listen in May, okay, uh, Liang Hui, okay, China Liang Hui, two ses two sessions in May. The internal forecast, uh, is about uh three from uh, three three percent. That's why you know the first quarter result. I mean the second quarter result is uh three percent. So the internal number roughly about three percent. So to me, next year will be higher. Okay, you will see later on the number will be higher. Now, this actually the the government's money spend uh the fiscal on debts, the number actually much higher as compared to almost double as compared to the financial crisis in 2008 okay same as the budget deficit okay also almost, almost double so this actually you know you can you, you can see from this one from ims forecast okay so and this actually you know the fiscal measure okay you look at china and the us so everyone also spending money okay try to help the poor jobless no loan guarantee these are things okay uh us is coming to about in terms of percentage of gdp is coming to 15 percent but china actually because they manage well the percentage actually low okay the amount actually big but the percentage actually low okay so as compared to other countries okay now and you can see from here, from IMF, June, can you see V shape ready? Lowest point is actually in second quarter and the recovery ready. Biden says that if he actually you know win these elections, so he will listen to CDC. So depends on the uh, advice. If they say that they need to lock down, then you will impose the lockdown again. I don't think so. I think he will actually will do the same like the uh donald trump okay it's actually quite difficult okay to like australia able to bring it down uh, for things few hundreds to I think to to less uh, to from three digit to two uh, two digits so to me it's actually is not that easy especially for us we're talking about 300 whole million populations okay and uh state level may not listen to the federal so i don't think so okay but one thing is she i think trump actually made a mistake they opened up too early okay but during the winter time i think they will face same problem like brazil okay because brazil right now is actually the, the winter time just over only so the the cases will will spike up okay now Look at the U.S. economy. Actually, the number actually recently improving a lot. Uh, you can see the initial jobless claim weekly numbers actually coming down, and from the earlier peak, okay. Now recently, you know, drop below you know, one million, uh, below one million. Okay, so if you look through the job data, okay, uh, job creation, yes, just that. The job creation numbers recently is trending down. They actually do create job, but create uh, not as high as uh, analyst expectations. So that's why uh, some analysts, some economists disappoint, disappoint with these numbers because to them, it's, the number is just not as high as what they expected. So you see this trend coming down, not a good sign. Then, of course, the unemployment rate is actually coming down from the earlier peak, but from this number to bring down to 3%, as I said to you, in 2008, actually took roughly four or five years. So they have stimulus, stimulus package one, two, three, okay? So they continue to print money, okay? So to me, uh, especially, you know, the US, so with these COVID-19 cases where the American may not believe in these vaccines, to to reach that kind of seventy percent, uh, the herd immunity, I think is quite difficult. Unless don't force them to you know, to get, get inject, but these sort of things actually depends on individuals. 
it's very hard to convince Americans to actually you know to inject these vaccines. So to me, uh, the US recovery to me will be slow. The, we may have seen the worst, but recovery will be slow. Okay. So this continuing jobless claim, later on you know, you notice that actually the, the curve slowing down, but take a long time to bring back to the original levels. Okay, for US, I think it will take three, four years. So, and this annual growth, huh, the GDP growth number, for the next few quarter, you will see uh, the number will jump back. Okay. The third, the third quarter number will be good. Okay. How about US dollar? Okay. Because the continue need to print money, so the US dollars will continue to come down. Okay. Uh, you ask me whether Mr. Wee, will, will US dollar drop back to the 80, the, the US dollar index? I think will I think likelihood. How about against US uh, ringgit? I think against ringgit may drop below four, three point eight. Uh, this is not a good sign for our tech stocks. Huh? Okay, some of our tech stocks actually, you know, each time you no know, the ringgit is strengthening, so you know, ringgit huh? is actually bad for them because actually some of them actually like Unisam. It's actually hundred percent for export, so each time ringgit actually the second ringgit uh, drop in the weakening of US dollars, uh, you notice that they actually uh, incur losses. Okay, almost hundred percent for export. Inflation rates may pick up, may go up higher. Okay, why? Because they start to print a lot of money. Okay, may create a lot of liquidity in the market. So history will just repeat itself. Uh, just like in 2008, 2009, after that, you will see the inflation start picking up, okay? So that's why not good for bond. That's why uh, careful on bond. That's why you do, you will see the yield curve actually, you know, start to step, depending on yield curve. Long-term bond, you know, start to, uh, the yield is actually higher. How about consumer sentiments? Recently improving, but it compared to 100 before the crisis level, still quite far okay it's quite low okay to me to reach to go back to 100 i think it'll take a long time okay take a long time uh one thing is actually you know the retail sales number actually quite good the uh, recently you know uh positive two percent as compared to you know, earlier month year to year changes negative okay manufacturing also numbers actually quite good more than 50 percent means the manufacturing actually expanding okay uh, however, the industrial production remain low. You can see from here, later on you will see the China number and Malaysia number. The actually numbers are still, year to year changes still lower by 8%. Okay. The order actually may come in, but the changes of the industrial productions actually still drop by 8%, year to year changes. For China and Malaysia, actually, we are recover back to original level already, you know, to zero already, you know. Ah. US actually is too negative, eight percent. Look at China. I said to you, the second quarter is actually positive three percent. Uh, from the two session, Liang Hui, they actually based on the government release numbers, they actually work it out roughly, you know, three percent. Okay, three percent numbers. Um, IMF only forecast actually one percent. To me, actually will be higher. Okay, the key part is basically they manage well COVID nineteen cases. Okay, you can see, you know, the. Uh, economy is actually growing. See, more than fifty percent. Okay, even higher than before the crisis level. Okay, more than fifty percent expanding, going to expand. Okay. Uh, so my point here is actually those in the bubble, those able to control, those country able to control, they will actually produce more goods. The demand will be higher from this country to supply to those in dark blue color, okay? So like country like Little Malaysia will benefit as well, Thailand, Vietnam, you know, China, all these will benefit because our economy will grow, because we'll produce, the demand will be high, then to produce product for those in dark blue because they still need to manage the COVID-19, okay? Affect their economies. So can you see over here, China industrial production turn positive ready, okay? US still negative, right? Negative 8%, right? Ah, China is still positive. Okay, year to year changes grow higher than last year already. Okay. Retails, one thing in retail sales, US actually turn positive. Okay. They print money, man. 
everyone they give money 600 ringgit i mean 600 us dollars okay quickly and now actually reduce 400 okay so that is actually positive two percent uh china she's still uh negative okay but actually it's low negative already inflation uh start picking up a bit but still low okay not like as high as uh, january how about malaysia now go back to malaysia okay if you look at malaysia to me the numbers actually second quarter actually quite bad of course because we have mco la uh rco la so many ceo so basically uh second quarter will be bad but to me third quarter onwards actually things getting better already okay we do have i mean like today we have 100 cases but to me we'll manage well okay we will manage this uh covid 19 okay uh part of the reason basically you know big uh biggest drop is actually you know from the services okay then you have manufacturing as well okay then you have mining as well okay and the government actually do have a proprietin penjana i'm not going to go through this part okay to inject money here okay so from here uh part actually you know go to which uh subsidies okay then but this actually from forecast from a world bank this number i think will be quite reliable okay uh i think the revenue drop okay part of this short form basically because of the oil prices actually drop okay you can see from here the uh, mainly driven by the lower uh, petroleum rated income okay directly you know the petroleum rated revenue drop okay of course you do have a corporate income tax and personal income tax okay it also drop okay the total uh, 20 billion okay from imf forecast i mean from world bank forecast this company this world bank actually do have a branch in bank Negara. okay to me the the numbers quite reliable then the forecast no that's why i said to you what do you think about 2021 right for malaysia economy positive growth imf no the forecast for no about the eight percent okay uh malaysia no next year for world bank is about seven percent i think the number roughly will, will, maybe will be higher than as higher than seven eight percent okay given our economy i think recovery okay you can see a lot of number actually recovering back to the original level already okay this year actually negative drop three percent okay because of the mco for two months basically you need roughly about two months uh, to bring down the case to zero you no know? full lockdown for two months so but us unable to do that so that's why i mean they open up too early that's why uh economy good but you notice that they cannot control if they cannot control during these periods and i shared you earlier that uh the temperature is coming down already so we are going to enter uh autumn and winter soon so i think uh if you are unable to bring it down to zero then when you enter into zoo uh to to winter and the vaccine only even available and inject everyone I shared with you earlier, right? 10 months, only 25%. Eh? Okay. Uh, that is actually in 1976. Eh? I'm not too sure right now. Eh? People trust all this vaccine or not. So to me, I think it will be tough. US will be tough. Okay. For Malaysia industrial production, can you see over here? Good sign. We actually, you know, like US is on negative 8%, right? Year to year. We actually, you know, go back to zero already. That's why I say to you that fully recover almost full recovery already okay that's why you notice that actually you no know, every uh those actually some of you actually in kl you know that everywhere jam right ah got traffic jam is a good sign you know ah yes economy is actually going up activities you no know, going back to normal already so our pmi you know uh recovering okay come to go back to before uh, almost uh, 50 50 means the more than 15 minutes expanding okay recovering and you will from the bank negara okay whether wholesale uh trade uh retail trade industrial productions export credit card spending 
PMI, electricity usage, all this already recovery. May not go back to original level, but recovering, just like credit card spending also recovering. Okay. <clears throat> How about Malaysia Ringgit? So to me, Malaysia Ringgit, uh, as I said to you, versus US dollar will continue strengthening because US will continue to print money. So uh, is it a good sign? Uh, short term is okay, but long term, I think, because all countries also you know, appreciate versus uh, US dollar. Okay, whether it's actually Robin P, also the same, all appreciate versus uh, US dollars. So to me, uh, would would depends uh, versus those uh, other country, uh, the currency from, from other uh, ASEAN countries. Look how there's performance. Then if you notice that uh, the the U curve, uh, okay, start to become steeper already. Okay. It means that uh, uh, long term bond yield uh, is actually you know higher. Okay, it dropped less uh, as compared to short term bond. Okay. The U curve, not flat, uh, flat U curve, it's actually become a uh, positive U curve already. So it me also means that actually, you know, economy re recovery expanding already. Okay. That's why be careful actually investing in bond. And the average lending rates coming down and our overnight policy rates actually dropped to, uh, this is actually the earlier numbers. Okay. The latest numbers. Okay. Uh, drop below 2%. So key part here is actually, and these numbers already lower than our 2008 low of uh, 2%. So people are expecting, you know, will cut interest rates. Uh, my view here is actually, you know, further cut. I think um, my view here, we still do have room to cut interest rate because our inflation rate is actually negative. Year to year changes actually negative. We still have room to cut interest rates. Okay, that's why most of our economists predict that uh, maybe we have one more cut. Okay. Uh, of course, right now people are worried about this after 30th of September, the moratorium periods. Those people you know uh how it's going to you know, repay the loans. And they need to withdraw money eh, from stock market. Some actually you know, withdraw some money from stock market, go back to settle loan. No? That's why the liquidity in the stock market may come down. My friend, during don't have to service loan. Some actually quite rich. Don't have to service loan. But actually, go and no uh, speculate stocks. Now after thirty of September, need to some actually need to go back. So certain portion of the money may flow back to no banks. Banks don't need to settle loans. So of course will affect stock markets. Uh, plus uh, as I said to you, drop in the uh, later on I'll share with you on the Dow Jones. Okay, now stock market outlook. 2021. So as I said to you that for US economy, this drop here, recovery for a long time. Three, four years only can go back to the original level. Okay. But how about stock market? Recently, before the crisis, before the pandemic, it's actually, you know, 29,000, right? Dow Jones dropped to 18,000. Now recover back to 29,000. To me, actually, we do have two V, but I anticipate the second V will be less. Then some people ask, mention, hey, Mr. Wee, you say that uh, Python may win. Python may win, they're going to increase tax, and then will be bad for corporate. Um, that's why I said to you that COVID-19 cases actually going up, then the chances of Trump actually lose is quite high. Okay? It all depends. Uh, my view here is actually it's, it's quite tough for them. Okay. Uh where because actually September, October already. So of course recently the trend is just coming down, but they're able to bring down further or not. You know, given that uh school open. Okay, of course, right now you need to take note here actually, they do wear masks as compared to earlier. Uh because Donald Trump actually mentioned that you need to wear masks. So However, you do have another question here is how many percentage of Americans actually do wear masks? I look through uh, from CNN, from Fox TV. I noticed that actually a lot of Americans actually wear masks. But whether all of them wear masks, 
like Malaysia oh. or China or this? I think may not lah. I think may not lah. So, and you you notice that this style, this COVID nineteen uh, they mutated. Uh, this latest one is actually the D six one four G. Actually, you know, quite contagious. Uh, so it can spread quite fast. So given that actually, you know, the temperature is coming down, it's normal to have flu. Um, uh, and the school reopen. And we have about 40 states actually facing problem, those colleges. I think it will be tough. So I anticipate we'll have another V, but it's a smaller V. I don't think we will go back to this 18,000. The main reason because at that time, we don't know how to handle this COVID-19. I think now, even American, the US government actually, they, they know. Okay, whoever you know in charge, they also know. That's first part. Second part here is actually, uh, at that time, caused by drop in oil prices, drop panic, you know, at the time, do have a panic selling on the sharp drop in oil prices, plus the drop in the Boeing airline. So to me, we don't have these two factors. Uh, I think the Dow Jones may not able to, I mean, may not drop to 18,000 anymore, but it will drop from the current levels. Yeah, I'll share with you shortly. So, Market need to factor in all these five factors. So conventionally, eh, September and October is always a tough month. If you have market rally, eh, a strong rally eh, during March to August, September, August, then when it come to September, October, always uh, be careful. Will be tough. Will be tough. Okay. Then, as I said to you, that the daily cases may go, go beyond 70,000 again. And then market may, the US, I mean, the Trump may not get reelected. And number four is actually, you know, the this second quarter result actually, even though it's better as compared to second, I mean, the third quarter result, even though better, because they're going to announce it in middle of October. So this is actually a period where, U.S. corporate result, no, like all oh, this Amazon result going to result, announce the result, and the result actually better, no. But the stock market coming down. Let me say, how can it be? Because analysts already factored in already, already factored in already. Then for Malaysia, I will share with you later on shortly on the MSCI, okay, foreign debt price uh risk. Okay, so, uh, normally you look look at all the major crash. The bank panic, uh, the market crash in 1929, uh, Black Monday, 1987, all happened in October. Then you do have is actually the crash in frozen it happened in September. So that's why this month and next month is a tough month. Okay, then you say we so we so whole cash. My view here, here is actually since you actually make a lot of money for recently the market rally. So no harm locking your gain, hold some cash for these two months. Okay, but you cannot be too bearish, okay? For Malaysia, of course, I'm not too sure what's going to happen uh, in the next few weeks' time, you know, whether they will maintain the, uh, we are actually in, inside the index or not, okay? The review of Malaysia, no? uh, still don't stay in the MSCI bond index, okay? And if you look through, um, in terms of the, Public, uh, public debts, percentage of GDP, foreign debts, uh, cost of borrowing. Actually, we actually rank lower than Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, or Indonesia. But we are ranked S&P rating. This is S&P rating. We are actually higher. Okay? Now, Dow Jones. That's why this part here also happened in next few weeks' time. So, crucial, no? September this month, actually, crucial until October. Only these two months, my view is actually, these two months, crucial. Okay? After that, it's okay. Then, uh, March 21st, low is actually 8,200. Then, we actually recent peak is actually uh, 29,200. You notice that actually already gone back to pre-crisis level already. Already. Like nothing happened at all. Now, June already mentioned to you that nothing happened at all. But the next question is, is it true nothing happened at all? You know also not true. March, this period, 
okay, unemployment rate is 3%. During these periods, you have unemployment rate of still 8%. No, about 15 million people, you know, still no ask for the, the, the claim, jobless claim. So, cannot be the same. And during these periods, the COVID-19, the peak is actually the 20,000, 30,000. Now the peak is actually can be one day 50 to 50,000 and the peak is actually 70,000. So you know, definitely not the same. Okay. So my point here is actually, uh, my last few slides here, basically the gain is actually total gain from the low of 18,200 to the peak is 19,200. It's actually 11,000. So 11,000, if you rough, rough calculations, if you use one third of retracement, that means one third, okay? The peak minus one third is roughly about 25,500. If you are half of retracement of the gain, maybe about 24,000. So that means here or here. So I don't think it will go back to 18,000, even though Trump lose, okay? I don't think so. Uh, some report says that Biden also may be friendly to stock markets. Okay, you notice that a lot of uh, reports saying, uh, yesterday, there's one 530 survey says that the chances of Biden winning is about 70%. Okay, so you asked me, uh, I shared with you earlier already, the sign showing that actually uh, he's going to, uh, he should, win these elections okay now go back to the spanish flu i want to share with you this part let me say oh, hey repeat the, the slide no the key part here is actually if you go back to 1918 to 1920 post 1920 what happened to u.s economy u.s economy growing all the way for 10 years until 1929 great depressions so the stock market actually jumped, Dow Jones jumped after the 1920, okay, the post, the Spanish flu, the market jumped for 10 years. So my point here is actually market may have some volatility of these two ones. After that, market will rally all the way, okay, rally all the way to uh, until I will not say 10 years later, I will say at least three, four years, four, five years, okay. Then you have a crash again in 1929. After 10 years, then you have crash again. The Dow Jones actually from 60 jump all the way to 370, then crash from about 370, crash all the way to 50 again. <laughs> okay. So how about Malaysia? Uh, this is actually from Ben Negara. They you can you see pay attention to the non-resident? They do have sharp outflow in first quarter, panic selling. But they, these non-resident actually do have a big inflow in second quarter. No? I'm not too sure who are these non-resident. Okay, maybe they, they also invested in the glove stocks. I'm not too sure. Okay, but actually in about 20 billion, uh, okay, exits. So net, net, of course, they still net drop by 20, 20 billion, but they actually you know, do have coming in by 20 billion. Uh, okay. How about uh, my last slides today. So, KLCI. At the moment, if actually sharp drop, of course, the trend actually may go down. Today already break uh, 1,005. I would say 1,004 and above should be, 1,004 levels should be able to hold it. I think, I don't think you, you will see this anymore. Then people will ask me, Mr. Wee, what do you think about election? Or oh. election, this election will be a, it's not negative news. Uh. This election is a positive news to the stock market. That's my view. Because it's actually removed this political uncertainty. Okay. Uh, PN will win big. Okay. For this com coming election. If let's say, you know, you have election this year or next year. Okay. The market will back. Market instead of coming down, it's actually go up higher. Okay. Because it removed political uncertainties. So my view here is basically uh, because of this volatility, these two months, it may drop to about 1,004 level, but after that, you search beyond uh, 1,006 or more time or go higher already, okay? Uh, it will go all the way up because I, our economy actually already recovered, okay? That's all my presentations, okay? Uh,
now. Mm. I pass back to Chen. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uy, for okay. sharing your insights and perspective with us uh, about the state of the economy and also the development in the COVID-19. I think you have shown us a vast amount of uh, economy data from uh, GDP to uh, PMI, industrial production, so inflation, unemployment, jobless claim, and so on. And uh, if you have any question to ask uh, Mr. Ui about uh, the stock market, you can also uh, put it in the uh, question box. So we will now go into the Q&A session. So yeah, today we have a full house crowd. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks to thanks to your interesting topic. Now I'm. Any question you can write in the Q&A box so we can take the, your question, but of course write in the full sentences so that we'll be able to uh, understand what you mean. Now on my screen right now, there are already uh, quite a number of questions on the glove. So I think I will just sum it up by uh, asking what, what what is your outlook for the glove sector? Do you think the glove party is over uh, or uh, consider it the, the possible uh, vaccine coming out or you think that the vaccine coming out then the ASP can still maintain for some time then uh, the, the the price can st still have room to grow where's your view okay for glove my view here is actually is, I think uh, if you want to play on you must understand to me the focus now should be on the pharmaceutical already okay uh the period on prevention uh, i mean usage of glove like some companies actually when venture into ventilator or this you notice that may not need that kind of preventions okay but we need those post covid 19 that means uh those patients actually don't get covid 19 then actually recovery so to me focus should be on pharmaceutical you ask me whether no the like uh top glove Today drop to 760, can buy, you know, of Hata, drop, sharp drop, all these uh, glove counters. My view here is actually, if you times three of the top glove, okay, the price still about $20, okay. If you look through the, the growth of the, when they reported the results, the revenue increased by one point, I think 1.2, 1.3 to 1.8. So actually the increase in the revenue basically by higher selling price, okay. so. The key issue here is the research report always says ASP, ASP. That's why the profit jumped from 100 million, I think, jumped to 300 million. So, because actually they sell higher price. So, not the volume increased a lot. Yes, no doubt increased by the increase by revenue, increased by 40%, but actually they're able to sell at higher price. So, my key point here is actually, do you think they're able to continue to able to sell at higher price next year? My view here is actually, is, I think competition coming in. You look at some uh, research reports, okay, uh, China, Europe already coming up. Just like our face mask, at one time, no, wow, the price actually went up very high, right? But today, you notice that the price actually dropped to low levels. So that's why my view here is actually, this may happen in glove. When? I'm not too sure. I don't think right now. But the stock price start to mention to you that we need to focus on the post- uh, COVID-19. Post-COVID-19 means that you're talking about uh, healthcare. Okay? Those like India, Russia, US. So when they, all these, how many million people actually got this COVID-19? Even though you're not, no, you're still alive, you're not dead, you're not passed away, but that kind of post-COVID-19, that kind of, you need a lot of vitamin, pharmaceuticals, no, uh, to cure it. Okay? So my, my point here is basically is the we don't talk about vaccine, talk about that part alone. I think the pharmaceutical stocks will go up higher. Okay. If you look at the money that is spent on the pharmaceutical versus the glove, because glove we do have a uh, the risk actually, you know, they comp once actually people start to produce it, because it's not something special, right? So glove only. But we're talking about uh, pharmaceutical, the medicine, and because of lockdown, I think imported medicine may not come in, then the generic medicine uh, will sell at higher price. That's why, you know, to me, if you look at, you know, uh, between these two sectors, I'll prefer pharmaceutical rather than the, the glove. Glove to me, to me, the once uh, the 
they are unable to charge at higher price. The volume, the, the demand may be still high, but may, they need to quote at lower price once the competition coming in. That is the reason why I'm not comfortable uh, with at the current current account of pricing. It's still quite expensive, you know. If you look at the PE, it's quite expensive. Yeah. Okay, about, thank you so much uh, for your sharing on your uh, for, on the glove sector. So uh, there are also a couple of questions that ask now. You know, besides glove and also pharmaceuticals, like what other sector do you think will boom during the recovery phase in the economy? Um. I think packaging will go up, okay. Then you look at the things uh, because the gold prices are getting higher, of course, people are actually buying gold, gold, uh, gold related stocks, okay. Then I think we do have a, a pharmaceutical uh, related stocks, okay. Then we do have a recently actually increase in the timber price, okay. That's why some of the timber counter you notice that actually, you know, the price actually, you know, the, the, all actually red, eh, timber stocks actually, you know, like some of the timber stocks, eh, the, the color actually, you know, green color, so you look through, Google it, I mean, you check through, so all the key. So I think with the highest lumber prices, I think the timber stocks actually, the price, the timber rated stocks actually, the top price will go up. Okay. How about plantation? I think plantation wise, no doubt the CPO price getting higher, the soybean price getting higher. The key part here is because lockdown, the we don't have, uh, they don't have enough foreign uh, worker to actually, you know, to pick the fruits. So my point here is actually the volume may come down, the revenue may come down. Then because of you charge at higher CPO price, but you actually vol volume lower, in the end, the net off effect may be the same. That's why you notice that actually the plantation stock not, not really rarely, you know, despite higher CPO prices. Then how about the construction related and property related? I think the next phase will be, you know, infrastructures. I think, of course, the infrastructure, construction sectors and property sector will recover. Okay. If you ask me about Genting, the tourism, I think uh, the next one will be because lockdown already. So local tourism, the stocks actually will rally. Okay, because it cannot go up. So most likely we are kind of already in you know, September already. You start to plan your holiday. So this year, local tourism related stocks actually will rally. You will see the local tourism related tourist related stocks actually will rally. Okay. Mm. Hope answer your question. Okay. Yes, 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 definitely. Uh, can you also comment on banking stocks? Ah, uh? uh, banking sector actually tough. Uh, our KLCI actually fifty percent from banking stocks actually is quite tough. Uh, tough in the sense that I, uh, you ask me, I think it's, uh, even bank itself actually not too sure. No, um, our finance minister says about fifty billion, and then it says uh, plus the business loan something about seventy billion. So actually, out oh, of this amount, how many when it comes to after first of October onwards, actually how many AG will pay? That's why I believe, of course, some will withdraw out from stock market, will go into settle loan. Of course, they will affect liquidity in the markets. This one we need to take note. Okay? When come to start to withdraw on it, because some actually you know may not able to extend it further. Actually, some actually do have do have money to pay. So we don't know actually which one genuine. So I think the bank right now also quite quite cautious. One thing here is actually all these factors, negative factors, some may already factor in into the stock prices already. So to me, may not be that bad. Because actually, if you look through, we only bought one quarter. So to me, uh, if you look at the industrial orders, all these, actually things actually recover already. It's only the, that that one quarter. So um, really have a severe impact. Of course, do affect certain industry. Yes. But that part, some of it is actually due to the, uh, we call it, uh, industry revolutions where change online, things change. Last time, you still refuse to change. Uh, don't want to change your business model. Now you're forced to change. So some may not able to handle well or 
of this change of technology. Last time before 2020, you say, I, my business still okay. Right? But you notice that actually this government already mentions for how many years that you need to you know change your business model to online, you know, selling online. Then actually for those actually change faster, actually the business is actually not bad, you know. Some actually doing quite well, you know. So my view here is actually is I think not all uh, loan will turn back because it's basically one quarter only. So that's why some of the factor already factored in the stock prices. That's why banking stock in general quite cheap. Of course, you buy right now because they cut on dividend because they're also quite cautious. So uh, whole world also say all the banks to, to cut dividend. So of course, you get disappointed. Oh, you're so low only. But you need, you cannot look at this year. You look at next year. Okay, of course, the things only clearer will be next year's uh, February when they actually announce the the fourth quarter results. Uh, that time only clear. So that means safer next year. But at that time, stock prices may actually go up higher already. So to me, uh, if I say you, this drop here, we're talking about W shape, right? 2V, right? The second V is actually smaller, right? If you look through some stocks, actually it's quite cheap. Not necessary banking stock. I think you can buy already. That you miss out in March earlier on, this is a time to buy. You miss it, then you we are talking about the next few weeks only. Okay, starting from next tomorrow onwards. So anytime any stocks actually you like it and you good fundamentals, it's an opportunity to buy already. Okay, because I'm not too sure how low you will drop. Okay, I said to you, may not drop a lot. But nowadays market actually drops quite fast. You can see Dow Jones actually drop uh 11,000 points within three weeks' time. So this is our market, uh, the V-shape uh, can be very steep, but also rebound also very steep. So you are, same as Malaysia stock market, when you have any drop, you need to press your button and buy stocks already. Okay, come back. Pass back to you. Okay, understand. Uh, thanks for sharing. There are also a number of questions that ask about your view on the tech sector because we see that the tech sector not only in the US has also reached a new high, <laughs> but um, in the Malaysian tech sector also uh, you know, boomed so fast. Okay, what, what is your view? Can they sustain the upward momentum? Uh, I think I think we do have a uh, one report actually. Uh, the PE in the general PE, I think the PE is quite high. Uh, I do have a uh, PowerPoints. Uh, I actually compile from the newspapers. Okay, so in general, the PE is quite high right now. Okay, uh, the key part here is actually you know strengthening of ringgit may not good for some of our semiconduct semiconductor counters. Okay, that one you need to take note. Okay, and our ringgit will continue strengthen below four. Then it's actually may not be a good sign for those tech stocks for those export base. Um, how about the rest? You no, know, doing others. I think uh, it's quite hard for, for me because some actually, this period may they get contract like, after that because of the fight between the, the China and US. So they may terminate anytime, then some, suddenly. Uh, so uh, my view ultimately with the, the decoupling between US and China, ultimately the whole world will have two systems. So it depends on whether you, know, you want to use which system. Some actually prefer US, some actually prefer China. Of course, in terms of technology-wise, China, I think, they're leading in certain areas. But in terms of no, certain system, everything, so, the industry standard, all these, people still prefer uh, US. So ultimately, we're two systems. So if you are caught in between, some of the tech stocks actually caught in between. So I'm not too sure, uh, like Donald Trump, uh, is, like today's, just say it, yesterday says only no. You want to stop all this American firm. So you will want out the supplier. <laughs> so I also not too sure whether no. Uh overall, overall, the PE actually quite high. Okay. So the key part here is actually you ask me whether the tech bubble burst already. In general, the Dow, the Nasdaq actually already from twelve thousand dropped to eleven thousand, already dropped ten percent. You ask me whether enough, I think already in overvalue already. So you need to let it come down. But overall, long term, I think the next step will going to go higher, tech stocks. But I think short term like, correction actually is now on the way already. Mm, yeah. Okay. I, I, so that's your view. Um, now, just now you mentioned about uh, Trump decoupled from, uh, you know, America 
uh, decoupled from uh, China. That would uh, so that is the what you see will happen. But what if Trump do not win? Do you think this will really happen, or just like Trump saying, just threatening, say some threatening words so that he can get some votes? Um, to me, actually, uh, you ask me uh, my view, but my, my personal view, I think China prefer to deal with Trump as compared to Biden. Okay, okay. you must understand, uh, Biden, the background, the Obama time, uh, white is white, black is black. Yes, 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 means yes, no means no. So, uh, you do have a, a, a the. He's actually done the, the assistant. He's actually you know the Kamala uh, Harris. So to me, this lady is a tough lady from legal background. So same like Obama from legal background. So white is white, black is black. So it's quite difficult. Not like Donald Trump. So Donald Trump is actually in front say certain thing. Then at the back say deal differently. No, I say, if you look through John Bol uh, Bolton, his actually recent books, he already said that already inside the books. No, I say one. Okay. So my view here is actually you ask me, but on outside appear to be Biden will be more friendly. But you ask me, it's quite tough to deal with these people because they are, they will say yes, yes means yes, no, no. Not like Trump, Trump say yes at the back, maybe no. Or no means yes. So, they actually you know, do have a lot of negotiation at the back. We don't know. Okay. You know this then Trump may say a lot of things, uh, but you know this that China actually does come out with the press, say uh disagree, you know, no, 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 no. But no further action ready. No further action. Trump may do all these things, but no further action ready. So you know this that actually in, in terms of China, still wait and see. But as long as you to to China, these are small things. Uh, okay. To to US, like TikTok, all these are small big things. Uh, Huawei is beating, but to China, this is a small thing as compared to the whole country. So, actually, the focus is actually not the same. But, and two leaders, two big countries, they do have a disagreement. It's just that Trump, all this, make it like a very big every day in the media and tweet almost every day. Um, almost all he talk, actually do talk about China, 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 China. So, you ask me, those actually have a business deal with China, they know American. So China is actually a big market. So the couple may not good for them. So I think the business deals, China to them, you may the leader may say whatever they want. They actually look at the actions. So they don't look at what you actually say, but actually look at the things that you have done. Okay. So to me, I think the the business between them actually you know uh still integrated. I think uh, they still need need each other's. I think long term wise. Whether Trump or Biden, even Trump actually, even if let's say he win, I think he would, the tone would tone down already because he don't need to seek for re-election already. Whatever he say for the election only. So to me, whether Trump or Biden, I think Biden will be a tough one to, to deal, really tough, just like Obama, very tough from legal background. So uh, to me, I think not like businessman, it's easy to deal. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are also a, a number of questions asking about your perspective of oil and gas uh, sector because right now we've seen that oil and gas have uh, uh, gone down from negative zone back then, okay, in April. Now back we are back to about 40 over dollar per barrel. So, so what do you f f think about the outlook for gold, oh, so for oil and gas? I think the ultimately the flight, uh, because uh, talk about the long term, long distance flights, basically, I think about six, 60 million. Uh, Barrel, we're talking about. So my view here is basically, uh, the worst may be over for oil, but may not able to go up very high. But the flight, flight uh, for because you must remember, you no know, two bubble, uh, one bubble, uh, those country can manage quite well. So that means the Malaysia direct flight to China may re, you no know, may start again, over again, next year. Okay, because once actually you know the number come down to low level to so single digit, I think the China will say, oh, you allowed the direct flight from Malaysia to, so people will, may not people may not travel, but businessmen may travel, flight may may start no to to start. Uh, I think that will be for those bubble, those country in that bubble, 
the flight will continue. But cross to those dark blue, uh, then cannot. Okay, so the dark blue will be continue to be tough. Okay, but kidding here is actually you know not like the earlier lockdown already. You notice that even the the dark blue, okay, the dark blue countries, okay, the COVID cases in terms of thousands, they still also don't have the that kind of full lockdown, like you no know, like our, our MCO during that time, no traveling at all. So that's why I say that, uh, the worst is over. But may not able to go up. The key question now is actually all the oil and gas counters, uh, they actually cut capex. So that's why they cut the capex. If you are the not the major one, you're actually sub, you no know, depends on all these capex. So of course your business will be affected. So that's why you have to wait until the overall oil prices go up to 50, 60. Okay. At these levels, because we are offshore oil, so our cost is actually higher at 40 level, I think it's break, marginal break even only. And you look at Arab country, because the COVID-19 cases are actually quite bad. So to them, uh, because the cost is quite low, the direct cost is quite quite low. So that's why they, they continue to supply. That's why the supply will, will go up and the demand actually will go up. But in the end, uh, the price may not be able to go up. And the oil and gas counters, uh, companies, uh, they cut capex, affect the overall, I mean the oil and gas count, uh, counters. So to me, uh, neutral only, but unable to go up very high. Worse may be over, but it will not go down very low already. Yeah. So you think about forty dollar per barrel should be the the uh, range, la. Forty fifty, yeah. Ah, uh, forty fifty. Yeah. Because they actually will increase production because Middle East country actually, you know, their their economy badly affected. That's why to them, uh, I I will not cut my productions. I will increase it because my cost is quite low. So to them, they will not cut anymore. Once at this level, they actually make money. It's just that the US still oil, they'll, if you add in the variable cost plus their, their fixed cost together, they're actually coming to 40 over. So that's why it's actually 40, 50 levels. So it's quite expensive. They may not yeah. be able to make money. Yeah, the, the, the Arab countries, you would just want to uh, pump in more on you know, liquidity ah, yes, supply yes, yes. so that they get the market share. La. <laughs> and plus, uh, okay. because they actually. actually are badly affected by this so lower oil prices that's why to them they don't do want to revive the economy so they will not cut anymore like iran all this they will they make money you know at this level the cost that the variable cost is uh then direct cost is actually below 10. some of them below 10. now just now you uh you forecast that the gold price will still go up uh, yeah. in the next few years because the, the massive stimulus package oh, being yes, rolled yes. out or yeah, to yeah. be rolled out by the US government or, yeah. or perhaps maybe some other governments uh, worldwide they are having a you know tough uh, situation controlling the COVID-19 so uh, there are also questions about which gold stocks that you would recommend them is there any recommendation uh I think um like Pokong, Tome, all these, they are actually they are inventory because actually the you ask me how high the gold prices will go up, I think it will be at least more than two thousand one. I think it may come up come to two thousand five. Ten years ago, the peak actually is actually uh two thousand nine. You ask me, I think may right now you see the thousand nine, thousand eight, thousand nine is a strong support level. So you, my view will go up higher to uh, 2001 to 2005 or higher possible because you're talking about you're talking about the stimulus almost every three months uh, until one or two years later so us dollars are going to come down so the goal will, go, will continue to go higher we stocks if you're talking about pocom tome because they are actually inventory because of inventory of gold prices are getting higher so to me, the upside may have limited, okay? Because they buy high, sell higher, buy low, sell lower. So higher stock prices because of speculation plus because the inventory higher. Then how about uh, Bonio Oil? Uh, you're talking about Barbes or this. I think the fundament fundamentally, uh, they're actually not really that strong. Of course, the exploration also do have some problem here and there. Uh, so to me, uh, that one more speculation play, but not really a cool go rated stocks okay um uh, mm, okay. reprop reprop is actually you know recently there because of the loans unable to convert to shares so that's why you know the price drop 
So, but now it's actually just a pro uh, property counters. Uh, okay. If not, earlier, uh, earlier on, this Mui Prop, actually, you know, if let's say, you know, they, they're able to convert to shares, then their Mui Prop, Mui Properties, these stocks, actually, you know, the next metal exploration is actually, you know, the real gold, they actually discover gold. But unfortunately, the the first, the second quarter, they're able to find, I mean, the reported 5,000 of Aussie. So I think they don't want to allow the, the loan co convert to shares. That's why the share price actually dropped recent, uh, recently. So that one to me is actually, if let's say they're able to convert into shares, uh, that one uh, gold stocks. Uh, okay? Because they do have okay. an exploration in, in Perth, actually, you know, able to, uh, the gold is go all, all quite, quite promising. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, uh, you have commented on uh, several sectors. There's also one more sector that I, uh, that people are asking, which is, uh, what do you think of stable stocks such as REITs? Uh? Uh, should we go into REIT counter at this moment, uh, seeing that uh, volatility is in spike, and then uh, should we seek uh, stability in this market condition? Okay. Uh, office REIT is actually tough, okay, because of the old supply issues. So on average, no, office is about vacancy is about 20 to 30 percent, coming to 30 percent already. So it depends on which office REIT, okay. And you notice that actually the the different yield higher because of the the stock prices drop. Second point, how about retail rates? Uh, I think will be affected. And you look at again the mall, and uh, I think because of COVID nineteen, we need to understand that the consumer behavior actually changed already. So change really means that the buying pattern may change. So just like the Shopee, you know, uh, nine nine all this, no. The Lazada, you see it everywhere, no, the put but it's been so they will buy things from there, they may not go to the shopping mall. So the retail mall, big, very big one, may able to survive. But you ask me whether it can continue to grow at a higher growth rate. I think may not be, may not be. I think uh some retail rates actually, you know, uh the mall actually later on, because the business model change really, people buy things online. Warehouse rates, yes. Warehouse rate, yes. So uh hospital rate, yes. So however, if you will ask me on office rates, retail rates, I think it's actually tough. Lah. Okay, because this change may be permanent. Eh? Like people buy uh like like I start to buy things from Taobao, eh? okay, directly from China. So I noticed that actually the price actually low, much lower than the, the current price, even lower than Lazada and Shopee. Some actually some products directly. I just wait, no, extra one week, no. I can get from there from, from China directly. So my point is actually here is actually will affect some overall retail. Okay. Even some industrial as well. Okay. Certain products. Mm, okay. Well, uh yeah, so Hospital REITs or industrial REITs, uh? so that's what uh, yeah, I, I, warehouse, I come from. Uh, warehouse, uh, warehouse REITs. <laughs> okay, definitely out of uh, retail and uh, office. Uh. All right, so uh, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ui, for your sharing on uh, The Worst is Over or More to Come webinar brought to you by uh, Kenanga. So let me just share with you what, uh, what are our next uh, webinar. Just give me a minute. Let me make myself a presenter. All right, so yes. For those of you who are uh, not yet a Kenanga uh, client, you can uh, go ahead and open a Kenanga account by key by uh, clicking on the link that I just shared in the chat group. Uh, click on the link, fill in your names and your uh, and your contact details. The friendly dealer representative from Kenanga Investment Bank will contact you to proceed with your uh, account opening if you want. So uh, if you don't have an account with Kananga, you can. If you already have an account with other bank and also want to have another uh, stock trading account, you can also open one with uh, Kananga uh, today. 
So our next webinar is on a FMB stocks uh, power talk, which is happening on 24th of September 2020, is a Thursday. So it's 8.30 to 9.45. If you are somebody who look for stability and want to uh, look into uh, understand more about FMB stocks, uh, please join our next webinar brought to you by Kananga by uh, enrolling yourself, registering yourself in the link that I've given you in the chat group. Uh, please click on the link to register yourself for our next webinar on 24th of September, Thursday. All right, so uh, thank you very much everybody for tuning in today. We have a full house crowd. So uh, we have also have overwhelming questions asking about good questions on the outlook uh, in relations to the market, in relations to the you know COVID development, uh, also talk about different sector outlook. Thank you so much for uh, coming in to learn from our speaker today. So we will see you in the next webinar. Okay, thanks Mr. Ui and bye everybody. Thank this you. Is Shane bye. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. See you all Thank in the you. next Kananga webinar. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Yeah. Shane Chu signing off.